Hi, this is Omar from Spitfire Audio with a demo using Aperture mixed with a couple of other libraries. And I have been watching a lot of sci-fi recently. And when this library came through, I just thought this would work perfectly with a genre like that. It's just the way Aperture works, but it comes from a very small place and then just opens up into these really big sounds. And I had sort of these images in my head whereby you'd follow this one singular person out in space. So there's this contrast of having these giant planets and stars and moons. But let's have a listen back to what I have here and see whether you think it works. There are not actually that many layers in here and it's a fairly minimal score but the way that Aperture was made with these 56 amps and 4 subs which is nuts it already creates this big scale. There was actually a couple of sounds that I based my whole composition on which were this effects combo here which I absolutely love and just wanted to have in there which are combined with the felt ascent. Thought that was a really nice eerie combination. But I had to work to this sound. For me, this was already a little bit on the open side of the aperture. I wanted to come from a very small place. So very simply, I have this built here using a few different layers. Some are moving, some are long notes. I have this sound in motion. And here a couple of longs that I've mixed in with. From the synths. You can see I've used a semi note over here just to give it a little bit of a dissonance there. One other moving sound is the ask again from the synth. What I added to this channel though is the arpeggiator from Logic, which I discovered way too late in life. And I set it to 16th note rate. Without it, you actually just get these individual hits. 
then further down, the other libraries that I've used are chamber strings and solo strings. Again, for chamber strings, I also used the arpeggiator. I went a little bit more into detail with this one. I changed the velocity so you can go from live, which is the preset view, I think. And then you go to grid and you can also put it into chord mode. What I've done here, though, is that I put a five step pattern over a four, four bar. And that is because I wanted the accents to fold differently. So rather than having a cycle of four going over and over, which you kind of get used to really quickly with that sort of extended pattern, it gives you a little bit more variation. I'll just solo that. And here is the solo melody. Which I actually really enjoyed harmonizing with the synth sound over here. I like that the synth is a little bit off there too. For each of these sounds, I'm trying to build really slowly throughout. This is what the aperture is helping me with. I'll just play a singular sound for you. You can hear how the actual scale expands. I have this programmed for most of the sounds here, but something else that you can find within the library is the LPF fader which I've assigned to one of these and as a combination together with the aperture and the expression I think it's a great tool helping you to build something. Some of the synth sounds are actually eight lyras and I, I got to be part of the recording session for those and it was crazy just standing in front of this massive wall of amps and uh, hearing it all for the first time. It was quite immersive um, and so it's really nice to see how it ended up being this playable library. Another section that has been recorded is the machines, drum sounds. I actually have an arpeggiator on these two. And obviously when you just discover something, you want to play with it, but it did really help to put this beat together. I'm using the same concept as I've done for the strings, whereby I have five measures of a 4-4 beat. Again, just moving the accents around. On the shaker, I also have a tremolo, so it kind of just moves around a little bit more. And for the kick, I find the arpeggiator helped me to make this a little bit more playable with me actually also being in time. You can kind of just come in and out, break up these loops as well. One other thing that I noticed is that the machines, the drum sounds blend and mix in really nicely with the strings and the synth sounds, partially because they've also been processed and recorded in our studios. I'm coming up to the point where I wanted to use the two sounds I definitely wanted to include in this piece. What I needed was a couple more layers to just help me build to that moment. I was looking out for having enough reverb on these tracks so that it sort of can linger into the next section, blending it nicer. But I also wanted this to happen in a slightly higher register. So I've got this little pattern going on. I think you can hear that hanging over in the higher frequencies. I then also just had a little ramp across all of my channels over here to build to the effect sounds. I have one more layer over there, which is an Albion One Easter Island hit. And then I wanted to give it a lot of space. I wasn't sure whether I should come back with the drums right here, which I tried out, but it didn't really work for me all that well. So I thought I'd just 
build again slowly with some other sound that I absolutely love. There's this cloud sound over here, which I want to single out together with the Pearl Shimmer. And before that, I just have the strings climbing up over E minor and B. Some pulses over here. Here's a melody. And I'm partially following it with some aggressive guitars. Then the solo string violin is bouncing off the melody that I've just played with the chamber lungs. And then back in together with the drums again. One thing that I've done here though is add another channel for the kick so I can change up the arpeggiator pattern definitely wanted to have a different one there. And lastly, just a big hit, bringing back the effects combo sound one more time. If there was something I would still change, I think it's the last couple of bars of the drums to work better into the ending. In terms of the mix, I've used a little bit here and there of the cinematic rooms for some reverb to tie things in. I also have on the drums for them to come out a little bit more uh, using a compressor and also an EQ, just putting up the higher frequencies. comes out a little bit more. But having looked at this now a little bit, let's listen back one more time.
Again, I haven't used all that many elements in here, but I think what Apertures is really great at is making things sound really big. And the sounds themselves have some complexity to them that do already a lot of the work. So I hope this gave you a good idea of what this can sound like, what you can do with it, and hopefully I'll see you in the next one too. Thank you for watching.